Any questions? So we are uh, once again very fortunate to have Maharaj with us this afternoon. And on behalf of the Pesh Prabhu and Shamsudri Mataji, we'd like to welcome all the devotees. Matajis, Peter, call all the Matajis here. All the Matajis have come here. So today is a very special day. Today is the Shri Sahaji Sakharin's Day. It's a very, very important day for Yogi Vaishnava, especially the devotee of Skon. So yesterday we had a wonderful festival. Yuraji, Mahamots, Puja, Rinovarji, Maharaj. And uh, we are so fortunate that on this wonderful occasion, Maharaj is here with us. Mm -hmm. So today we'll hear about the stories from us. And then after the class, we'll have the responsibility of the Shri And then there will be a Prashat, peace for you. Till 12 we are passing, right? Yes. <laughs> so let's welcome Maharaj by taking the shelter of the day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare everybody Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Chayane Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Vishatarine Vancha Kaupata Rupyashya Kripa Sindhu Vaivata Padita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavityo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Devata, Shri Vasati Gorva Kavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I, I will recount some of my memories. Uh, I came to the Krishna Karma in London, and at that time in London, we were renting a house in central London, just beside the British Museum. It's not very far away from where they are at present. Uh, if you go to the Soho Street Center there in London, it's like, like 10 minutes walk. from there. You have to walk from Silver Street, walk along Oxford Street, cross, across Tottenham Court Road, and then into Bloomsbury. And our place was a Bury Place. It was a rented house, number seven Bury Place. It was, we had about six floors, but each of the floor area wasn't very big. But somehow the devotees uh, did the devotees who had come from America, the three householder couples were very in, in they had a lot of initiative. And uh, the, the, the Shamsundar Prabhu had brought even wood with him in preparation for the temple. <laughs> he brought all this wood, red wood from America, he brought it all to England, and he used it to. Uh, put on the inside of the temple building there in London. I remember my first impression of going into the temple. It was like going into Noah's Ark. 
<laughs> it's something like Noah's Ark, you know. It was, it was just all, all wood, you know, it's a few wooden structure everywhere. But then when I saw the deity, it was very powerful. Uh, they were very fortunate that the devotees had acquired the deity to grant up Landanishwara. And that was a whole wonderful pastime. Uh, Srila Prabhupada had brought these deities. Uh, Prabhupada was anxious for the devotees to get a place there in London and to have their own center. The devotees had been staying there for more than a year uh, without anything. At one point, they had all stayed at John Lennon's. John Lennon had an estate. I don't know, do you, do you remember him? <laughs> The late Mr. John Lennon died 1980, not long after Prabhupada departed. Uh, anyway, they were out there in John Lennon's estate, and Prabhupada didn't like it there because that you know, John Lennon was involved with drugs and, and you know this terrible. So Prabhupada wanted that they could get a place in London, and somehow. They managed to find this place in central London. Of course, people who rented it had no idea what we were going to do with the building. But anyway, they, they got their rent. And they all got his commission. So uh, uh, Mukunda. At that time, he's Makunda Prabhu, now he's Makunda Goswami. He drew up the constitution for the society. And was presented to the charitable organization. And that same registration was later on used in India. So the, all of the centers in India were registered from the constitution, which was drawn up there in London. And then we used that registration to register the society. And so being read a registered society, we had tax exemption. So that was quite an achievement. And Prabhupada was pleased about that. And we... had the, the center that Prabhupada wanted deity, so they found an Indian society had brought the deities, they shipped Radha and Krishna deities from India, but somehow there was a some damage, little damage, very minor damage, the Indian society were not going to install it, so Prabhupada went there and he saw the deities and they were very, very beautiful. And Prabhupada said, yeah, okay, we'll take them. <laughs> and then so they picked up the deed. It is right on the spot and installed the deities. In, at the opening of the temple, they installed the deities. So that was quite an historic event. At that time, it, there was no other Hindu temple in London. There were no deities. Nobody had any deities anywhere. It was something which, you know, Prabhupada had masterminded. You could say, and you could see also it was arranged by Krishna. That Krishna arranged that these deities would come. And Prabhupada said actually, he said Radharani arranged to have a little fracture in her finger just so that she could be installed in our temple. <laughs> So the deities were installed there. It was very beautiful. And uh, the devotees were later, after just like some months after they'd opened the temple, then Srila Prabhupada called the, those householders who had gone there to England. Prabhupada called them to go to India. The Srila Prabhupada wanted to be in the preaching in India because there was nothing going on in India at that time. So Prabhupada took 
uh, he took Shamsundar and Malati and Yamuna and Gurudas, they went off to India. And Makunda was left there in London. And his wife wasn't happy there. She wanted to go back to America. So later on, he also went back to America. So the temple was left in the hands of the few, very few people, in the English devotees who joined the movement. And they were all totally new in Krishna consciousness. And so that was about 1969. I joined 1971. There were about 20 devotees there at the time. And the deities were being taken care of by a French lady. The French lady was a woman named Mundakini, not very old, she was in her 20s. And she was taking care of the deities. And she didn't really have any experience. I remember well, the Radha Mandanishwara, they were changed once a week. That, so that, that's not the, our temple standard, really. You know, it's supposed to change every day, but at that time, because it was new temple, and she was the only one taking care of the deities. And so the, the, the Radha Krishna deities were changed once a week, and the Jagannath deities were changed once a month. The Jagannath deities were above, situated above Radha Mandanishwara. So it was very exciting when they changed the deities, you know, we were all very happy to see the deities in their new clothes and in, 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 in the dress. And then when they changed the deities, the temple, and it really wasn't easy for them. They were maintaining also the offerings, the, the offerings which were required to be done. I remember sometimes that in order to purchase fruits, you know, we'd have a fruit offering every afternoon. They don't have really much fruit, which is local grown. So in order to get money to purchase fruits for the deities, we had to think how to sell a book. <laughs> Our only income was from books. So they'd ship some book. That was the that was the book of that to sell a book, and then we get some money to go and buy fruit to make the fruit offering to the deities. So we were literally living from day to day. In the, in the evening for the RT. And uh, then the devotees told me, they said, you know, you can stay overnight if you like. And we have a morning pro program as well. I was coming every evening and taking part in the RT. And hearing the Bhagavad Gita program. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try. You know, I don't usually get up so early in the morning, you know. <laughs> they were saying four o'clock. I thought, wow. Something <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gave it a try, and I was living at the temple. And I was going to work. I had a job. I was working. I graduated from university, and I taken a job, and. Uh, I was going to work and so I was uh, like 22 or 21 and I thought, yeah, why not? <laughs> Give up the job. What's the job? You know, you can always find a new job. Jobs. There's so many jobs. <laughs> Anytime they can kick you out, you know. <laughs> so anyway, I gave up the job and they gave me a new job. <laughs> In the temple, we were, we were making incense and that was how we supported the temple. Whatever income we had for the temple it came from incense. Uh, the devotees in the USA, they had begun an incense factory 
if you called it spiritual sky incense. And uh, they had come to England and they taught devotees there in England how to make the incense. So we were making that. And so they gave that to me. They said, you know, you take charge of this incense business. <laughs> so you had to purchase the different things to make the oil and the pumps. We used to import the pump to make the incense. We didn't import that from Hong Kong. And then we get the oil from the oil factories and make the incense. And then we would distribute it to the shops and different places. In that way, we had some income for the temple. So that was helping to support the temple. So I was doing that for that was my first service when I came to Krishna consciousness. So I was uh, quite involved with the temple, trying to earn the money to maintain the temple. Uh, Krishna consciousness was very new in London, and we didn't have a lot, we didn't have a congregation. There was no congregation to support us. There, Gradually, though, we could see one or two Indian people were helping us. Some Indian community was there, and they were taking up an interest and helping a little bit. At that time, at that time, many people had come to England from Uganda and Kenya because there had been a problem there. But the, there was someone put the men in charge of the country put out the Asian people, you know, and, and they, because of, those were British colonies, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania were British colonies at one point. So people there had British citizenship. So they came, when they were put out of the Uganda and Kenya, they came to England. And, and that was a big help actually because most of them were Gujarati. And Gujaratis are generally religious, pious people. Anyway, they came with nothing. They left Africa, they had to leave everything. They came to England and uh, they worked hard and they established themselves. And later on, uh, we got some of the, you know, they would be coming to our temple and their children would become devotees. <laughs> they would come with their children, they bring their children to the temple. And then later on, when their children finished school and so on, they thought, why should I get a job and work better? I just join Hare Krishna. And they would become devotees. And so we had a No, there's a number of uh, nice devotees, and even the temple president of Bhaktivedanta Manor, previous temple, Shruti Dharma Prabhu, he was one of these boys who joined. And then now we have also one of the sannyasis there, it's from the Indian community. Born in London. So like that, it's had a, you know, a big help for our devotees there. And the Indian community, they support a lot because we have uh, Bhaktivedanta Manor and Bhaktivedanta Manor. It's the Bhaktivedanta Manor for the. It was nice because we had the, this very place was so small and we had so many people joining. We had so many people living there. People were joining regularly. New to uh, how to develop, how to accommodate everyone. It was quite difficult. So George Harrison, uh, he timely purchased the Bhaktivedanta Manor, and that helped a lot. And Prabhupada liked that building. He stayed there in London. And he liked staying there in London. But Prabhupada's program at that time was to bring important people to meet him. 
you like to me. Different. We don't need them to preach to them. And it was quite a successful program. Different people who were well known in the world, they would bring them to meet Prabhupada. And Prabhupada would talk to them and tell them about Krishna consciousness. And there was one man, one Lord Mountbatten, Lord Mountbatten, relative of the royal family. So Prabhupada was speaking to him, and Prabhupada was asking him about death. And so this Lord Mountbatten said, oh, time of death, well, we'll die peacefully. And Prabhupada laughed. He said, oh, really? You think, you think you'll be peaceful at the time of death? <laughs> Prabhupada thought it was quite amusing how this man thought he would die peacefully. He said, actually, it's at the time of death, people are not usually peace, peaceful unless you've properly prepared yourself for leaving the world. Then only you can be peaceful at the time of death. And of course, that is the subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam, how to prepare for death. Another person who came to meet Prabhupada was someone called Graham Hill. He was a motor racing driver. He had been a world champion in Formula One motor racing. So he came to meet Prabhupada and, and he was telling Prabhupada how sometimes when he would be driving the motor racing cars, sometimes you could feel yourself close to death. And Prabhupada said, yes, this is a fact. He said, actually, at every moment, we can be close to death. We don't know when death is going to come to us. So like this, Prabhupada was meeting these different people, discussing Krishna consciousness with them. This one girl I was telling you about, she was a Pujari, Mundakini. Prabhupada had gone to Russia. He, he, he was anxious to go into Russia. And he, Cham Sundar, had arranged for Prabhupada to get some kind of visa to go there. And they had a contact with a professor in the University of Moscow, a professor Katovsky. You can read the transcript of the lecture. It's in our science of self-realization. Prabhupada talking to Professor Katowski in Moscow. The professor was a head of Asian studies, but he did not believe in life after death. And Prabhupada, he was saying, at the time of death, Swamiji, everything is finished. And Prabhupada was telling him, you know, that this is not fact. At the time of death, simply you're changing the body, you're going to take another body. The professor, because of his indoctrination into the Marx philosophy, he could not understand this, however. However, Prabhupada had the opportunity, he was there in Moscow for just a few days. So while they were there, Shyam Sundar, who was Prabhupada's secretary, had gone to look for some rice. To find rice in Moscow in those days was quite difficult. So he was looking for some rice and he met two young, young men. One was an Indian young man. And do you have any Beatles music? <laughs> <laughs> they, they were on, in Russia, there were no Beatles music. They'd heard about it, but very difficult to get it. So they saw these two. They saw this Western man whose music with you could give us, but I have the guru of the people. <laughs> so so they were, they, you know, their eyes lit up. They were surprised. They thought, yeah, can become good.
you like to come and meet them? And he said, yeah, come on. And the Russian boy, he asked so many questions. And Prabhupada, in the course of a few days, Prabhupada every day spent time speaking to him and gave him Krishna consciousness. Consciousness and accepting him his marriage. <laughs> he said, I would send you a, a nice European girl to be your wife. And so he, he, when he came to London, that French woman, the Mundakini there, he, he told her, You go to Russia and marry them. <laughs> and this boy, this one young man who met Prabhupada, he spread Krishna consciousness all over Russia, you know, just practically on his own. He went <clears throat> everywhere and he introduced Krishna consciousness. They were persecuted. They were severely persecuted. They were put into mental hospitals and they were given drugs to destroy their brains, you know, they, they, they did some very cruel things to them. And so they, they did suffer persecution for some time. But the Prabhupada had the one who went there to Russia and he began the preaching. He made the first devotee, initiated him, and, and Prabhupada He gave the example, he said, just one, and if one grain is soft, you know, all the other grains are also soft. So he said the same way. He said, from this one Russian, we're not a major religious force, but we are well known and we do have many centers and many members all over Russia. And we seek him because Srila Prabhupada Goswami, you should go there, you should go there regularly and preach there. And down to today, Gopal Krishna Goswami does go there and preaches there. So Srila Prabhupada established that the devotees would preach everywhere because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had said, Pratipiti Achiya Nogar Adigra, right? The holy name would be chanted in every town and village all over the distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere. So he had sent one of his very senior di disciples, Brahmananda, Brahmananda Prabhu, he sent him to Africa and he had gone to Kenya. to preach there. Prabhupada went there, he saw that the devotees were only preaching to the Indian people there. And he said, I sent you to Africa to preach to the Africans. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the devotees who come there say, oh Prabhupada. <laughs> not very, not very easy. No, but Prabhupada. Prabhupada said, no, you, you have to do it. And Prabhupada went there and preached to the African people, encouraged them in Krishna consciousness. Interesting, when Prabhupada went there to Kenya, he was living according to Prabhupada to come and stay in their home, each house. That the Vedic culture is that, that you just, a sadhu comes to the home, they will just stay for three days. After three days, 
three days, then they will move because it, it's so Prabhupada was just staying three days in one house. After three days, he moved to another house and stayed three days. And then another house, three days, like this. This is the Vedic system. Prabhupada. I was teaching devotees so long in their homes. <laughs> so Prabhupada went to Africa and he was preaching there in Africa and got the devotees to also preach to the African people. And Prabhupada was still apartheid. Prabhupada went to South Africa and he preached there in South Africa to the people. Prabhupada went to France and when he went to France in Paris, he began speaking to the French people. He said, your country is famous for revolution. You know the French Revolution? Maybe you've heard, of, there's a famous novel in English, Tale of Two Cities. And it tells about the French Revolution. You know, the royal family, the, the Queen of France, they were not taking care of the citizens. The pe people in France were all starving with hunger. She said, they have no bread? Why don't they eat cake? <laughs> So that was her reply. So when the people got that reply, when they heard that, that's when the revolution came up. And there is, you know, they got the guillotine, the French system for capital punishment. They don't hang people, they chop off their heads. And so very famous the French Revolution. So Prabhupada said to the people in France, he said, our Krishna consciousness movement is a revolution. He said, this is spiritual revolution, a peaceful revolution. We're bringing about a change A revolution in conscience. Before he departed from this world, he ordered Tamal Krishna Goswami that he should go to China. Actually, Prabhupada told many devotees to go to China. But for people, there had been some trouble among the devotees. Uh, the trouble came, a little conflict between the, the Grihastas and the Sannyasis. So the Grihastas were running the temples and so on, and they were traveling around in the USA. We're talking about the field preaching in the USA. So 1970s, they had Tamal Krishna Goswami had gone to India and come back to the USA. He was an American. And he came back to the USA and he got involved with another American sannyasi named Vishnu Jana Swami. And they, they had a bus with deities which were called Radha Damodar. They were called Radha Damodar because they were in the bus, so they had to be tied in. Because the bus will shake sometimes, you know. <laughs> so the deities were tied in. So they thought this is rather dumb. <laughs> so yeah. Tamal Krishna Goswami was involved with the Radha Damodar party, and they were traveling and distributing books. And Prabhupada was encouraging them to distribute more books because. When they would distribute books, he would give the money to India, for example, in Mayapur, and in Vrindavan, and in 
Mumbai. So Prabhupada couldn't get much money in India. In 1970s, he was the books were getting the money. So there was some problem that they have to maintain also the temples. <laughs> These devotees were traveling in the buses and they were distributing. Books, but the devotees staying in the cities, they have times between, uh, you know, where you go. If you go in this city, this city, this is our city, you know, and you can't come to our city. We are distributing books here. And that then also if they have a well. So if someone's a very successful book distributor, he would be a very valuable devotee because he bring in a lot of income for the temple. So that's important. Important. You appreciate that man. Just valuable to the company, right? If you bring back a lot of funds, they'd be very valuable to the temple. But sometimes the sannyasis would lure this good book distributor. to come and travel with them. You come and travel with us. You know, we're going other places. You can travel more. You'll visit more places. You'll see America more. You just stay in one city every day. It gets boring, you know, the same people every day. Better you come and join us. You come and travel with us. So like this, there was some problem created. So the, the, the different presidents of the temples, they came to Prabhupada and they told Prabhupada that the problem, that they're taking away our book distributors. We, make, we bring these people into Krishna consciousness. We make them devotees. And these people, these sannyasis, come and take them away with them. And, you know, we lose them. And, and so Prabhupada listened to the complaints. And, and, and so he told Tamal Krishna Maharaj, he gave him some certain restrictions that, you can't do this, you can't do that. And, and so Tamal Krishna Maharaj was feeling right, quite frustrated. And he said, Prabhupada, I might as well go to China. And Prabhupada said, ah, yes, very good idea. <laughs> he said, go to China. That's what you should do. You go to China. And Tamal Krishna, no, Prabhupada, I didn't mean that. <laughs> Tamal Krishna Maharaj tried to trying to get out of it, you know? But Prabhupada said, you said it, you said it. You should go. <laughs> so like this, he put some big restrictions on Tamal Krishna. He, he wanted him, don't create too much disturbance. Keep the peace. That's Prabhupada, Prabhupada would always get along nicely with each other to create that harmonious mood. Prabhupada came to America, USA, and the devotees who joined the movement were nearly all. of young people. So many young people are joining your movement. So Prabhupada told him, he said, because that is the time for education. So Prabhupada answered the question very nicely that They're coming to get edu spiritual education, an education which was not given to them in the material world, in their ordinary life. So I thought that was a, was a very appropriate answer. 
answer, which we will probably give to the consciousness movement. Of course, four kinds of people who come to Krishna. Chatur, Vida, Vajanti, Mam, Jnana, Sukriti, No, Arjuna. Arto, Chitna, Sur. Arthati, Jnani, Chapana, Consciousness. One in distress, one is in search of wealth, one is out of curiosity, and the other is in search of knowledge. So, those four different reasons are there. A lot of common, they come in distress, will go away. And it's hoped that by the time the distress goes away, then the devotee comes more to the platform of knowledge. He's more more appreciative of the knowledge, which the stress may be there. In the beginning, the desire for wealth may be there, or curiosity. But as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, of the four kinds of people, the best one is the one who comes in search of knowledge. And those people who appreciate the knowledge which is there in Krishna consciousness, then once they come to Krishna consciousness, they don't go away. They don't give up because they can see the highest knowledge, the best philosophy is there in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada would say, uh, of, science, of all sciences, the best science is philosophy. And the best philosophy is the Vedas. And in the Vedas, we have Vedanta Sutra. And Vedanta Sutra is presented for us in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So you read the Srimad Bhagavatam and you get the perfection of all knowledge. So Srila Prabhupada encouraged the devotees, all of us, that we must read his books regularly. I had an experience myself when I joined the movement. You know, I didn't really know anything. I read one small book and that brought me to the temple and I was very interested in Krishna consciousness, but I didn't know anything. And so it happened that one day a reporter came to the temple and I was just a very new devotee. I, you know, I, I didn't know anything. And somehow this reporter was talking to me and he was asking me questions about the movement. And you know, I really didn't know anything. I, he asked me, what is this AC Bhaktivedanta? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I have no idea what AC <laughs> Anyway, he was talking to me, and I, I read a lot of Maya Valley philosophy before. Coming to Krishna consciousness, and in some of my Maya Valley philosophy. <laughs> Like I remember when I first went to the temple, they asked me, do you know who God is? I said, yeah, I'm God, you're God, we're all God. <laughs> <laughs> the philosophy I lived with, I was brought up with that philosophy. That was Maya Vata philosophy. Of course, later on, Prabhupada's mission was revealed. The Srila Prabhupada to Lord Chaitanya, which defeats impersonalism and voidism. And Prabhupada was particularly concerned in the Western world because he saw the influence of the West. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, because in the times of Bhaktisiddhanta, but Prabhupada didn't go to Europe. He went, went first to America. He went straight to the Big Apple, New York. 
the big apple, the rotten. But somehow Prabhupada went there to New York and he established Krishna consciousness there. And then later on, he sent the devotees to England and to Germany and he all over Europe. So Srila Prabhupada very much wanted to establish Krishna consciousness in India. And the bulk of Srila Prabhupada's energy and time went into managing and overseeing the affairs in India. I had gone to America in 1973, and I wanted to be in USA because I could see that Krishna consciousness was much more developed in USA than in England. In England, we were struggling. We didn't have many senior devotees. They didn't know very much. But in USA, they were much more developed. So I came over to USA to spend some time there. And while I was there, I was asked to go to India because they needed to develop the preaching in India. Prabhupada wanted people from England to go to India because at that time it was difficult for Americans to get a visa to go to India. It was sometimes said that American divorces did all CIA agents planted in India to spy on India. <laughs> you know, how, how ridiculous it seems, but that was uh, the current, that was the mode. So Prabhupada wanted people, so I, I, found, I came to India then in 1975, and of course, it was really difficult. There was not much for me. Prabhupada had built the temple in Vrindavan. Krishna Balaram temple had been opened. And we were renting a small house in Delhi, a little place. And similarly, we had a rented house in Calcutta. And in Mumbai, Bombay, Bombay they, were, they had bought the land. And up in Juhu for the whole situation. But <coughs> somehow the preaching developed. The, the gradually things improved more and more. Devotees came. Indian people to join our Krishna class. You see nowadays that they do have a lot of very intelligent young people who have joined the Krishna consciousness movement. There's a number of people who are IIT graduate examples now, and we have a lot of people who have uh, taken in shelter of the Krishna consciousness movement. We have things like base, base, which is a you know no, and also spiritual association. And so a lot of young people <laughs> while they're studying are given the opportunity to associate with devotees. So Prabhupada wanted that very much that we would people bring them into Krishna consciousness and, and then they can take over the leadership of the Krishna consciousness movement. And that's what's happening actually. The educated People are coming forward it's in the Krishna consciousness movement, planning out the future of the Krishna consciousness movement. Of course, there are challenges in everything. There are challenges. There are changes. We see changes in technology. In Sri Prabhupada's time, there were no computers and there were no mobile phones. Nowadays, 
you know, people don't read hard copies so much. Everything is soft copy, right? So distributing books is uh, something which has to be adjusted according to time and circumstances. One thing, it, in some ways, it's an advantage that more people can get the books, really. And you can give everyone a soft copy of the Bhagavad Gita. Everybody has a mobile phone, so give them the Bhagavad Gita, put the, book, the Bhagavad Gita into their mobile phone. Well, what to speak that they can have all Prabhupada's books in their mobile phone. So these are advantages for the preaching mission. A lot of uh, changes are there also in the in, for example, uh, prasadam distribution. Prabhupada encouraged the devotees. He didn't want us just simply to feed poor people. He said prasadam is for everyone. He said the rich people also need prasad. So everyone, we have to think how to give them the opportunity to receive the mercy of Krishna in the form of spiritual foodstuffs. And certainly Srila Prabhupada wanted us to distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere to everyone. It's the nature of the Panchatattva that it said, when Lord Krishna came, he brought with him a storehouse of love of God. But the content locked. But then the Panchatattva came, they broke open the storehouse, and they plundered the contents, and they distributed it everywhere, without considering who is qualified and who is not. They gave everyone the mercy of Lord Chaitanya the mercy of Lord Krishna. And it's distributed the more the supply in so Srila Prabhupada encouraged us to distribute more the mercy of Krishna. He, Prabhupada's vision was that in the future there will be high court judges with Like. So Srila Prabhupada had very big vision for the Krishna consciousness movement. Of course, he always taught us, don't think small. small. So the temple, so someone said to him, why don't we just get a little piece a little plot in, Barab, in, in, the, in, the, in the bazaar, and uh, he said, make a place something like Radha Dhamma. Which is quite small. But Prabhupada looked at him and said, I cannot think small. He <laughs> said, I have to do something big. I said, what's the point? Say, what's the point of you being an American unless you do something wonderful? For Krishna, you want me to do big things, very nice things. So, spending some time in India but during the lockdown in the last three years, I've seen how our centers have developed in India, and it should. Really, a success story stands to develop very beautifully. In 1978, I was the, I was asked to be the temple president of Hyderabad. Prabhupada had opened the Hyderabad temple in 1976. So, in 1978, they asked me to go there to be in charge of the temple. And at that time, the temple was quite basic. Although they'd opened the temple, it was very basic. We didn't even have doors on the front of the temples. You know, the temple was just very the basic element. The deities were there, and 
altar was the only uh, thing, but it was, there was a lot to be done. And so in the last year, I had the opportunity to go back to Hyderabad and see how nicely the temple had developed over the, well, what, 40 years. And the temple became very, very beautiful and expanded also, they expanded the, the premises and, and more marble decoration, more ornate marble carving, and the deity altars, very beautiful, they've been replaced with new simosans. Everything was very, very nicely improved, how it used to be. And not only that, but new Temples had come up around. The, the one man wanted to do some service, so the devotee said, "Why don't you build a temple?" And so this one man he built and he got land and he built a temple. That's just in a place called Atharpur, which is adjoining Hyderabad. And so we have new temples opening up out of nowhere and just wonderful things going on all over India. Of course, there's still a lot to be done, but still, uh, it's very, it was very encouraging to me to see how nice the, 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 the movement is expanded in India and generally recognized by people as being very much bona fide. In the 1970s, People used to refer to the Krishna Balaram Mandir as the Angrizi Mandir. <laughs> you know, we were all foreigners. The, the people in the temple were all Westerners. You know, we all had red noses, you know. <laughs> we were, so they called the temple the Angrizi Mandir. <laughs> Nowadays, they don't say that. Because <laughs> there's not so many Westerners there now. But we have a lot of local devotees. So that's very encouraging to see. How much people have accepted Krishna consciousness. We can see also how just in the last week or two, how the Prime Minister of, in of the UK is a Hindu. And after his... Uh, installation as the Prime Minister of England. He went to the Bhaktivedanta Manor and he went as Prabhupada has his beautiful quarters there. So that was very nice to see that that he went there to the manor and he went to Prabhupada's room and sat in front of Prabhupada and offered prayers. So we expect to be a great success and do something for the British economy, <laughs> which needs, needs some re re rejuvenation. <laughs> so this is all to problem. Prabhupada's credit, this is not like the plot, right? And so you can see Prabhupada, he went in like that. He went to America with nothing. He went on the boat, you know, with nothing, no money or anything. But now, worldwide more. And his disciples are also continuing in the mood of Srila Prabhupada. Certainly, Srila Prabhupada wanted that his disciples would also write and that they would preach representing the Krishna consciousness movement. So I think Srila Prabhupada would be pleased if they would come today and to see the preaching which is going on. I think he would feel very happy to see how the devotees are endeavoring even in sometimes very difficult situations. 
how the devotees are somehow making arrangements to come together and to preach and have Krishna conscious festivals and distribute Krishna consciousness far and wide. So I'm sure on this day of Prabhupada's disappearance, we remember Srila Prabhupada and we pray that we can always remember Prabhupada, that he will always be with us and guide us. We certainly hope that we can do something to please Prabhupada. Prabhupada asked Tamal Krishna Goswami, he asked him, how many votes have you distributed? How many devotees have you made? How many properties have you acquired? <laughs> this is how Prabhupada would measure how much we're endeavor how much success we're having in our preaching of Krishna consciousness. It's not so easy things to do these days, make devotees, but devotees, it's difficult to get people to completely dedicate themselves to Krishna consciousness. We have much more congregation devotees. But I see that the congregation devotees also do wonderful service. Sometimes people who are congregation are doing much more service than even people who are full-time devotees. We, we don't know how they do it. <laughs> Somehow it's incredible that people who are working full-time jobs, and they're so, they have so many, many commitments, but still they manage to put so much energy into distributing Krishna consciousness and overseeing and organizing the activities of Krishna consciousness. So that is a great success. And we are very grateful to those devotees and we offer our thanks to them. And we encourage all the devotees, please continue and think also how we can do more and how we can give pleasure to Srila Prabhupada. We want to Keep Prabhupada in the center. Sometimes people argue that oh, Prabhupada's not in the center. But I think Prabhupada is very much in the center of our Krishna consciousness movement. Every temple, every day, we do Guru Puja for Prabhupada. It's very important for us to attend Guru Puja, Prabhupada's Puja. And we do all expect you to take the disciple course, and in the disciple course, we learn of the very important position of Shiva Prabhupada in our Krishna consciousness movement. that he is the Diksha Guru for all of our relationship with Srila Prabhupada. So on this day, this is a very important festival for all the devotees. That we all want to culture with Srila Prabhupada, Guru and our guide because we are in Prabhupada's society and we are guided by Prabhupada's books and Prabhupada's teachings. Patencies to Shiva Prabhupada and pray to keep us all together and keep us healthy in our Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any questions? It's wonderful. Memories of Shri Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, in your association with Shri Prabhupada, any time, uh, any discussion about the preaching in the British country? Or the no, no, I never had any discussion. But, but anytime we discuss.
discuss something about how to start preaching. For example, Prabhupada said about preaching in China, because in 1970s China was closed, it wasn't possible to go in there. So he talked to Mount Krishna because he told to Mount Krishna, you go to China. And so he, to Mount Krishna told Prabhupada that, you know, China's closed. How am I going to go in there? So Prabhupada said to him, then you send my books there. He said, you send my books there, and my books will create the field. And this is what happened. This is how the Russian preaching developed, especially. They were sending a lot of books regularly. And of course, at that time, Germany was divided, East and West Germany. It was divided. There was a wall right down the middle of Germany. And so that there was somehow they were getting, smuggling books into the Iron Curtain. It was called the Iron Curtain, Eastern Europe. So they got books in it. And we also got sent books to China. Uh, in the 1970s and 80s, most people were working in Hong Kong. And there was not much industry in China. Later on, China developed the industry. But 1970s and 80s, a lot of Chinese had come to Hong Kong, and they were all working and living in Hong Kong. And when it came to the Chinese holiday, like Chinese New Year, they would all go back to China. And so there would be big queues of people all waiting for the train to go back to China. So we would all go to the train station, and we we would give out books, and we would just give the books free to them to take back to China. We give them Chinese books to take back to China. And people, people, sometimes people got the books, and they were really impressed. One man got the book, and he said, I want to help you spread this knowledge all over China. He, he was actually a Buddhist. But uh, still, he was, he's very favorable, and he does help us. Even he's still alive, and he does help us. And another man got the books, and he, would, he wrote on the wall, big sections of the book, he wrote up on the wall, big sections right out of the book. You know, but he just loved it, but he thought it's not, he never read anything like it before. It was so amazing. And similarly, in Eastern Europe, people would line up to get the books. And they would line up and they would purchase all the books. They wanted it because they never had this opportunity. They've never had any of these. They've never seen these books before. And that knowledge was so special. They understood it was so valuable that they, they lined up and they used all of their money to purchase as many books as they could. So these are some examples of how Prabhupada's books actually changed the face of these countries. Prabhupada explained, he said, just like in India, Russians never came there to India to spread communism. How did they spread communism into India? They sent books. They had books. People got books about Marxism and so on. And you had Bengal with and Kerala probably still is communist. But it came into India by books. So these communist countries strict censorship of what you're allowed to print and what's legal and what's not. We've had a lot of difficulties trying to print books in China. In Russia also, they wait. sometimes they just photocopy, photocopy books. But 
they, they try to suppress our books because they know these books can really change people. Any other question? So we invite you all go to Russia, go to China. <laughs> Some preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Arabic and some terrible Arabic also we have Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, now we have Arabic Bhagavad Gita. Yes. Right. And some terrible locals probably we can use to the possible. Yes. See the situation. Yes. Prabhupada said he would take that here in these Arab countries. I had actually come here in Dubai. It was 1979. I come here. I come. To, I came to Dubai, the Middle East, Dubai, 1979. We came. We were trying to do something. <laughs> Couldn't do much. Much. And later on, we're happy to see more people taking up Krishna consciousness. But Prabhupada appreciates the austerity, and he said he would take the dust from the feet from the devotees who preach here. So you can feel <coughs> grateful for that. Okay, so now we will do party.